Um, and I appreciate it, Mark. Thank you. I did. I sent him the wrong text uh, earlier this week and this morning. I, I sent him the right text. That, that was my fault. But thank you. Uh, Pastor Dan Cook is here um, and uh, is going to preach this morning, and I, I'm really thankful for that. Um, and uh, my guess is that many of you are uh, as well. Let me tell you, <laughs> let me tell you just a quick story about um, about Pastor Dan. Um, he um, originally came to this area um, and served at St. Stephen uh, Lutheran Church up in Urbandale. And as a new pastor in town, I wanted to get to know Dan, and so I, I asked if he'd meet us for coffee. And we went to a really hoity-toity coffee shop. Um, up on uh, up in downtown, um, and I showed up and I recognized and realized you know as I'm walking in, I didn't have any cash with me. Um, I had my debit card, but uh, you know my debit card, you know it's the, you know, the limit, right? They say, well, you got to buy this many, you know, you got to buy like seven cups of coffee to use your debit card, right? Um, and uh, Dan Cook, Cook um, he jumped in and was gracious and kind to me uh, as I was trying to you know like welcome him to uh, to Des Moines. Uh, and that's the kind of guy that he is, um, and I've really appreciated his ministry both at St. Stephen and now really as uh, as the assistant bishop um, for the Southeastern Iowa Center. Thank you, Dan, for joining us. Today. My pleasure. My pleasure. I'm so grateful to be here, and, and as we gather, I also bring uh, greetings from our uh, Bishop Currents and the other 137 congregations that worship along with us today throughout the Southeastern Iowa Center. You know, whenever we gather to worship, it's never just as the people who are in one particular room. But there are uh, Lutheran congregations throughout Iowa, throughout our country. Uh, there are Lutheran congregations throughout the world. And then you add all the other denominations, all the other Christians. We are gathered together uh, by the gospel and by Jesus Christ with a great host of witnesses. And so we give thanks for that today. I also want to bring uh, thanks for two more things. Uh, one is the way that you live out your faith uh, each day of your life. Uh, you may know that one of the ways that the gospel is proclaimed is by word and deed. In every moment that you step out into the world, you bear love for your neighbor. You share a little bit of God's grace. That is such a good gift. Also, thank you for every resource that you provide that helps upbuild the kingdom of God. Every gift you give to support the ministry of this congregation, the gifts that you give to support the ministries of our synod, and all the other ways uh, that we support uh, health and wholeness in good things around the world. It's well received. It's such a good gift. And I say uh, thank you on behalf of uh, Bishop Current and all your brothers and sisters in Christ. And so with that, grace to you and peace from God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Amen. The stories of our lives don't make much sense without a past and a present and a future. And so we may only meet each other in the present. For example, I'm meeting you right here, right now in the present. And I don't know much about the story that you share leading up to this point. I know that you're celebrating 50 years of ministry here as New Life Lutheran Church, and I know that you've been preparing for a new school year, you've been enjoying summer, I imagine, but past that, I don't know too much of the story before that. I can guess, I can make something up, I can, I can presume, but unless I really know you, unless we get to know one another, that past part doesn't make too much uh, sense to me. Present, though, I get. I can look around the room and I can see all of us gathered here. I can see all of us doing the things that we do on Sunday morning, preparing for the week ahead, uh, getting centered in the grace of God. And all the gifts of this present moment come together as we anticipate what's yet to come, what future God holds in store for us, not only for our individual days, but weeks, months, years as a congregation. It's this past and present and future come together that is the story of God that we tell and the story of faith that we tell. For God, it's all happening at once. God sees us past, present, and future and sees that whole story as a, a story of one who has received grace. But we have to make our way through it in the ups and downs. We have to make our way through it in the midst of challenges, in the midst of hardship doesn't always make sense to us in the moment, but of course, God accompanies us. God is with us. God is bringing about good things and blessed things in our midst because God knows that the story comes together in grace and love and hope. 
The story that we heard this morning, all of those disciples gathered, all of those Judeans gathered together on the day of Pentecost. It makes a little bit more sense if you know the fullness of their story, because this one, this moment, this present moment, well, it's pretty cool. And it's got all of the things that you would want to see in a movie. It's got uh, action. It's got people wondering what's going on. There are tongues of fire resting on the heads of uh, all of the people gathered there. Everybody's speaking in different languages, so you have a little bit of international flair going on. They're bringing up prophecies from the past. There are a whole bunch of people who wonder if another bunch of people are drunk. I've watched that movie. This is great stuff. But beforehand, the reason that it's great comes together. And you know a bit of this reason already. You know that about 50 days before this story of Pentecost, Jesus was resurrected. And before that, Jesus was dead. And before that, the people had seen such hope in the ministry of Jesus. They had seen their life transforming before their eyes. The sick were becoming well. The hungry were being fed. Those who had nothing were finding that they now had everything through the ministry of Jesus. And of course, before that, the people had been hoping they had been Wandering, they had been trying to make their way through deserts. They had been enslaved in Egypt. They'd been kicked out of the garden all that much earlier at the very beginning of the story. And so, this long story of the past of being created by God and being brought into the world, and the flood, and the story of the slavery in Egypt, and the being set free in the wilderness, and the appearance of Jesus and his death and his resurrection then all comes together in this moment in the coming of the Holy Spirit. And it's incredible, least of all because nobody would have expected it. Jesus had died and rose again. You might think that's enough of a story to found a church on, but no, there's still more to come. The Holy Spirit rests among the people and reveals a future that is completely different than they might have understood. They thought that they had to get the team together again. They thought that they were going to be living into telling the story of Jesus, but the Holy Spirit appears to them and reveals to them not only would they be telling the story of Jesus, but they would be bearing the love and ministry of Jesus now into the world themselves as holy claimed and called people in the midst of a world that had no idea it needs to hear a story like jesus story these people are claimed and called and sent throughout the nations to all the different countries in all the different languages to bear the love and grace And you know it worked, because here we are in Iowa. Iowa was not mentioned in the list of countries in the story. But it worked. Can you believe it? It worked. They were sent that day, a couple thousand years ago, out into all of the known world and beyond to bear the grace and love of God, and it worked. They went overseas and over oceans. They went over mountains, across deserts, across plains, and bore the story of Jesus to the likes of you and me. And just like the story was handed off to all of those gathered in that place that day, the story is handed off to us today in the midst of our present to bear the blessing of God into the future. Whatever our present looks like right now, God is here with us, ready to bear good things with us into the world. I want to pause for a moment because I would hate for you to think that this call from God only comes when everybody is experiencing their highest high, when everybody is energized, where it was a great week, where everything went the way that they wanted it to. Because this call from God comes in the midst of some of the hardest things. 
You might remember from the reading, God raised Jesus up, having freed him from death because it was impossible for him to be held in his power. The good news of Jesus Christ doesn't come in the midst of you and I having a particularly fantastic day. But the good news comes into the midst of our hardest moments. Into the midst of moments where it feels like a death. And sometimes I wonder if our imagination around death is a little bit too literal, because sometimes the hardest moments of our life can feel like a kind of death. You know, I think about the people around the world and all the suffering that's going on right now. You might have heard about the earthquake in Haiti. And so you can imagine the landslides, you can imagine homes leveled, you can imagine lives lost. And even if you made it out with your life, it'll feel like something like You've likely heard of Afghanistan and the way that the country is imploding. People are trying to escape. People are losing everything they have or they are running for dear life. It's a kind of death as well. Maybe not a pause in breathing, but certainly a losing of everything that they know and everything that they thought could be. Jesus experienced that true death, that pause, that kind of complete stopping of life. Lazarus experienced the same thing. And sometimes a death like that can feel like a pause, a moment where nothing can happen, a moment where you're stuck, a moment where movement is impossible. Sometimes that kind of death can feel like there's no way there, nowhere to go, that you're trapped in a tomb and everything stands completely still. Hey, do you remember uh, when there's a, a particular threat, that fight, flight, or freeze? Have you heard those three words before? This is freeze. Everything stops. But in the midst of that moment where it feels like everything is at a total standstill, <coughs> and you're afraid of your neighbor, you're afraid of what could happen or what won't happen. You have no idea what's going to come next. You're sitting there all together in one place. All of a sudden, from heaven comes the sound of the rush of a violent wind. It fills the whole place where you thought nothing could happen. Suddenly, <laughs> wind from God, like at the beginning of creation, and then divided tongues as a fire alighting on the heads of every single person. And especially in that moment where you think nothing else can happen, you start to hear people speaking in different languages. You have no idea what they're saying, but you know it's good. And that voice comes from God that invites you to imagine the world as it could be and as it should be and as it will be. Just like the prophet Joel says, in the last days God declares, I will pour out my spirit on you all and your sons and your daughters will prophesy and your young men will see vision and your old men shall dream dreams. It all shall be set right and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. We may each be in different moments of that past and present and future story. But God gathers all those moments together in the midst of whatever we are experiencing. He calls us and claims us and sets us free so that whatever comes in the future moments, we will know that they are blessed by God. And we will know that we go with God wherever we go. We continue to bear the love of God into the world. It worked once, twice, three times. It's going to happen again through us. Thanks be to God. Amen.